Now we know that we need 16 and a half inches by 14 inches. So we're going to go with this shorter side to get our 16 and a half inches from, right? So we're going to use this as the length. We don't want to use the really long side of our poster board. This poster board is about 30 inches by 23 inches. Okay, so we can actually get two purses out of this. So we're going to be wise in how we use our, per, our board. We need the 16 and a half by 14. So we're going to cut some of this off. One of the first things we need to do is to measure, we want our 14 inches. So we're going to really smack our ruler up to the edge. We, we, we gotta um, use a little bit of fingernails in this, you know, because we gotta grab our ruler up to the edge of our paper. Okay, and there we have it. I am allowing some space to be left over. That's better. I am allowing this space to be left over so that I have some working space, okay? It's difficult to mark if it's all the way up like that, okay? So here we go. We just don't want to have our pierced holes, pierced holes. We don't want to have them too close together. All right. So I'm using my fingernails and I'm butting the ruler right up to the edge of my paper my poster board. And um, incidentally, I'm using poster board. If you have access to pattern making paper, the heavy manila, um, then by all means go ahead and use the manila. Okay, so now half of the 14 is what we need, which is 7. So we're going to come over from, from the edge over 7 inches going right over it. You can't do the sitting down, you must stand. And we're going to pierce that, okay? We're going to have a nice hole there. All right. Now, we need to do the same thing to the bottom here. We're going to get our fingernails involved. And we're going to just line this up. And come seven inches over and pierce. We are just getting that halfway mark. All right. I'm going to smack my ruler to this hole. And I'm going to line it up with the next hole. I'm going to make sure the ruler is right on center as best as I can okay with the next hole right here so I'm gonna then push this ruler over to the next hole to make sure it's lined up check it back again so I'm should I should have the ruler on top of both of these holes right in the center to test it I'm gonna use my awl and I'm just going to scratch it when I hear that sound I know I've gone in the hole all right I'm gonna do it here too bang you hear that? So once I have both of those sounds, I can now come and score. Don't want to score too hard because you don't want to tear or cut the poster board. Okay? And so now that we have that, we can just flip this over so that we can fold it and we're going to cut off the excess all right so we need help with this the ruler comes in handy for holding we're going to hold this down hold this pattern paper down okay so notice i'm getting my i'm pressing my fingernails against this. If you don't have fingernails, then you're going to have to use your awl or something and just press it into place. I'm getting my 
X-Acto knife. You, if you don't have an X-Acto, use a craft knife, but you don't want to use scissors for this, okay? And simply pressing against the ruler, and I'm keeping my hand on, my, my other hand on the ruler. I'm not going to move this until I'm sure it's cut. I'm giving this a fair amount of pressure. It very rarely comes off the first time, so if you get it off like this, you're doing pretty good. If you're not, if you don't get it off, don't sweat the small stuff, okay? That's quite all right. It has to be a very sharp knife with um, with a decent amount of pressure. Okay, I see. I'm not moving it. I just see a little bit of unevenness, so I might have wavered a little. So I'm just going to clean that off. That's not a big deal. All right. So, I've got that. Now I, I need to keep my, my road map handy here. I'm going to measure the six inches. That is the front of my design. I'm going to take my short part of my ruler, the L. I'm taking it and putting it to the bottom here to line this off because this is going to give me a straight edge to measure from. While I'm, measure, while I'm putting this in place, I want to make sure that the distance is even all the way up. If my paper is even and my, um, the way I put my ruler down, all of this should be the same. The same distance, the same measurements. So now I'm going to come up with my six inches. I'm not taking my hands off of this. I need to come up another six inches to 12 inches and I'm going to come up my half of an inch for the top measurement and again four inches so that'll take me one two three four to sixteen and a half inches now once I have that I can open I can open my pattern. I'm going to put my awl in the hole once again and I'm going to smack the ruler up to it, lining this one over. I'm going to line this one right up to it. And once I've tested it, And I'm comfortable that I'm hearing it, I can actually cut this off. Now we're not putting a pocket in this. It's such a small purse, it is a pocket in my estimation. Okay, so we've got that cut off and you see now we have these holes that we made when we had it folded. I'm just going to pierce it just to enlarge those holes. Sometimes when the holes aren't large enough you don't you don't get the fullness of the sound and I want you to be able to hear that sound. Okay so I'm gonna push this in the hole again and line this up there so we hear it and now we can score. Again, and the last one. You want to test this as many times as you need to because once you've scored it, if you make a mess with it, you're going to have to redo it. Okay, so now that I've scored, we can fold it to see where we are. Let's just fold these pieces in. And 
that's the makings of our clutch purse. We're not going to leave it like that. Although we could, like I said before, we could put magnetic closures under here. We do not use Velcro fasteners. You can get fancy with other sorts of uh, fasteners, but we want to raise our product from a craft level to a fashion level or a designer level. Okay, now you see this area here. This is what gives us the space. You can see the space already developing in here. Okay, so now we want to design our flap. Now this is where our rulers come in handy. are going to measure it's where a small rule comes in handy because you don't you don't want to be toting that big bulky one for everything we're going to come down about an inch from this fold line and we can mark that and that's where we're going to start designing our flap now this area also is critical we don't want to design this where this comes to a point. That doesn't look very nice and it makes the twist lock or whatever closure you're putting there, it, it gives it a tight area to be in. So I would say the minimum amount would be maybe three quarters of an inch if you're going to measure. For instance, if you're going to say you're going to come in three quarters of an inch. That would give you about an inch and a half there. That's as small as I think I would go. However, I don't even want to go that small for this. But I can tell you that you can go and have a nice look with a one inch marking. That means that at that peak, you're going to have, um, you're going to have two inches. So whatever you have on one side, you're going to double it for your overall. Now we once say say we're going to go with that marking there since it's already marked. We would then take our ruler and our awl, and we would just line this up using our heavier ruler for this though. If we're going to cut, all right, we can cut directly, or you can mark and cut. However, that is if you just want a geometric design. We're not going with the geometric design we are going with more of a rounded design. So for a rounded design, we will use our French curve. So we're going to come in here with our French curve where our one inch was marked and then we can play with this and see how we want to soften this up. We're just, we're just going for a softer curve. Now, bear in mind, I've already, I already have my fabric cut, so I might have to do some further adjustments if, if I am not cutting this, this the right or the exact dimensions. Or I can just pull this out and show you there. So then we would just we can mark straight around here, okay, and cut that out. But since I already have this, why don't we have fun? Why don't we have some fun and create a totally different pattern, okay? Because now you know how we came to that. How about us changing this look so I can incorporate a little bit more for you? Okay, so what, what would we do here? Let's go, let's adjust this by changing the shape of our purse. <clears throat> so, this is the flap area, this is the front. We're going to fold this and we're going to make some simple adjustments just to change the shape a little bit, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We can give this a more of a geometric shape. 
I'm just going to put my ruler right here on the edge. And I'm going to mark this initially just for a little dramatic flare. If I take two inches off and make this at an angle, let's see how dramatic that would look. Okay, so that would be two inches. If I did it at two inches, that's the amount that we'll be cutting off. All right. I think that's fine. So that would leave us with a purse opening to the top. Our purse measurements would be 10 inches. Okay. So, all right. Well, in that case, I'm going to go with one and a half inches so that we have a larger opening there for this pattern. So, here we go. I'm going to go at the one and a half inch and I'm only marking it in pen so that you can see it. What I generally would do would be just to take the awl and pierce where I want to go. All right, so I would pierce that. I would take my heavy ruler Go down to your fold line, right on the edge of that, right on the fold, and smack your ruler up to it so you can line this up. Now, if this is not dramatic enough for you, then what you do is you just shift it. You know, it's, you don't even have to measure to shift it, you could just go and play with it and see how dramatic you want, okay? So I'm going to just go there. I can shift it. I can say, well, let's go here. All right. And we're going to cut both pieces at the same time. All right. So that gives us the shape of our clutch, all right? Now we want to have the same shape on this side. So what we have to do is flap it. Once we flap this closed like this, we can line our ruler up. You can mark this if you wish with your pencil or a pen, but certainly not a sharp, a fat sharpie like I have there because you would really be thrown off with your measurements. Okay, so I have my, um, my ruler lined up. All I have to do is cut. I'm only cutting up as far as my fold line, as far as this fold line. I'm not going to go over there. That would be venturing into unsafe territory. Okay, so I got that one side. If I had marked it, I could have just gone like this and cut both ones at one time but it's just as simple for me to do it like this. I'm going to butt this up again. Be careful when you're cutting because you see, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but sometimes you cut off a piece of your ruler and you have little splinters or slivers of metal. You don't want that getting into your fingers. Cut. 
Now, I don't need these two little flaps here, so we can go ahead and cut that off. I am just going to cut straight on my fold line. Just get rid of that. Now we need to design our flap. All we have to do is bring this down. Right now it just looks like a hammerhead shark. We don't want that. We want to design that flap. So we are going to just tuck that in there. Make sure that our fold lines, center fold lines, are properly aligned. And then we are going to just mark this. Again, you can just do one side and fold it if you wish and cut. Sometimes it comes out quite accurate, other times it you, you might mix by a little smidgen. Let's see if we'll get this if I cut both. Line it up and cut. Remember, we're just going to cut up to the first fold line. You're not going down to the second one. It feels like it's cut. Let's see. There we go. It's cut. Now, you'll notice, well, you see, it was slightly off on the other side, but that's not a biggie. <clears throat> we'll see how that works out if I have to take off a little bit more. Okay, so now we're going to connect where this um, peak meets the first fold, fold line and this one meets this other part of the fold line and we're just going to cut that off. So we're just smacking this together. If I turn this over, cut on this side, I think I'd be closer. I would be closer to this line here. So I'm going to just give this a, a quick cut. Now I can just join these two, this one and this one, and cut it off. Alright, let's see what we have here. We're well on our way. Well on our way. So now that we have this lined up, this shape already out, we are going to come down one inch like we planned earlier to ensure that we have the privacy here, as I spoke of several times. So we're going to pierce that all there. And we want to make sure that we come in to about, have about two inches to play with. So I'm just going to come over one inch and pierce. And then I'm going to get my French curve. And I'm going to see how best I can, what kind of shape I can get out of this. Okay, so that just this is to give me a ballpark area. All right, 
I can make this even more rounded if I wish, depending on w what part of my French curve I'm going to be using. Okay, so I can go with the French curve or I can just go once again with the strictly geometric. Well, since that's rounded, I'm just going to go with the geometric just to, for the sake of having something different. All right, so we'll have the geometric. this down and cut. There we have it. Okay. The basic shape of our clutch. All right. We still have some work to do. Now, when we're putting our on our webbing our webbing is going to cause this to come out. It's going to cause this to come up and sews properly. So what we're going to do is eliminate a quarter of an inch up here. But this cannot be done until we have measured for our closure. Okay, so let's go to our closure. Our closure we know has to come up just a little bit over our webbing. We know our webbing is one inch and when it's folded it's going to be about a half inch on both sides and so we're going to just measure a half of an inch and then we're going to take this up an eighth of an inch. All right our measurement up an eighth of an inch. So now we're measuring from this edge of our flap up five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to just pierce right on the middle of that line, five eighths of an inch. I want this to go through to the next side. And there we have the hole. I want, this is what I'm going after. This hole right here, all right? And so what we're gonna do is we're going to label that hole and we're going to put bottom of twist lock. Okay, now that we have our twist lock measurements, we can go and take this off, this top piece off. So here we go. Line it up again, I'm using my short side on the straight edge. And I'm going to measure down this way. So I'm going to come down one quarter of an inch. You really need to know how to read your ruler. There are online um, tutorials on how to read your ruler. Okay, so we got those two holes. We're going to line this up once again. Put it in the hole. lined up and we can cut. Okay, so that's going to give us the space we need. You see it's taken, it's down a quarter of an inch. Now to make it easy, easier when we are lining up our patterns, we are just going to notch this. When we, when we are lining up our fabrics and our foam and other elements, we need to uh, make it easy on ourselves, so we notch. Our notches will just create a little V, sort of a registration mark, okay? Now, we do not want to make this deeper than a quarter of an inch because our webbing is going to be half an inch, and we don't want a hole sticking out. So we're going to notch there, and we will notch here. Because these all are at an angle, our fold lines, we won't notch those, okay? Now, typically, we would notch them. We could notch them here. We should have notched them there, and I will for you, okay? So there we have 
those notched. Okay, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to label our pattern. Let's call her Daisy. We're going to call her name because, you see, when people refer to your bag, they want to know. Uh, you don't want to say, oh, you mean that one that's shaped like so-and-so? No, we want to say, that's, oh, that's Daisy, or that's um, Leslie, that's so-and-so, you know, and it gives personality to our bag. So we're going to call her Daisy, and we're going to put our cut information. So we're going to say um, we need uh, our foam, we need one foam, our foamy, and we're going to use the two millimeter foam. So you could put the two mill millimeter if you wish. We want one board and that's going to be our chipboard but we're only going to use and it's optional um, I'm going to put optional on the side because we only need that on the flap we don't need it anywhere else or it's going to restrict how much we can put in our bag all right um we need so we need the foamy we need the outside fabric and we need one inside fabric or lining so these are the things we're going to cut so we then put cut four pieces okay so now if you're going to give your pattern to somebody else to make they have some instructions on it um, I like to really I'm doing this in pen for you but I like to mark my patterns in pencil so that the, it doesn't smudge and it does not mess up my fabric if I have to lay this on something else on a nice piece of fabric so we are pretty much good to go we are next we are going to then cut our measure mark out our chipboard from this piece and we're going to cut out our phone 